This video will show you how to do mixture word problems. These are word problems that are solved by setting up two separate equations. And they're confusing if you look at them in their entirety. But if you use what's called the Beaker method, then they're not so bad to set up because you are going to set up two equations. This says a 90% antifreeze solution is to be mixed with a 75% antifreeze solution to make 20 liters of a 78% solution. At that point, you're just totally lost and you quit and go to the next problem. But it's not so bad because we're going to use, like I said, this thing called the beaker setup. And there's the beakers because we're going to put our antifreeze in the beaker. What goes underneath the beaker will be the percentages. So we have a 90% antifreeze solution. So 0.9 or 0.90 is to be mixed with a 75%, 0.75. So there's a certain amount of the 90%, a certain amount of the 75% that's going to produce 20 liters. That's what goes in. The amount of liquid goes in the beaker. And we want it to end up to be a 78% solution. What we don't know is how much of each, so we're going to use two different variables. X is going to stand for the amount of 90% solution, and Y will stand for the amount of 75% solution. This really gives you your equations right there. We have two separate equations. One is what I call the liquid equation, which is what's inside the beaker, and the other equation is your percentage equation, which is just a product of these. And here's your two equations right here. Here's your liquid equation, what's inside the beaker, x plus y equals 20. Simple. That's one equation. The other equation comes from a product, 90% of this, remember of means time, so 0.9x. This represents actually how much antifreeze would be in this beaker. 0.75y, that represents how much antifreeze would actually be in this beaker if we could separate out the antifreeze from the other liquid. And then over here is a product of these two things, 0.78 times 20. These are two equations. It's a system of two equations. We can use either elimination or substitution. I favor elimination, and that's how I'm going to solve all of these. If you'd rather solve by substitution, then you can stop the video at certain points and then solve these on your own. Now, I left this as 0.78 times 20 just to emphasize that this number over here is a product of the under times what's in. Well, 0.78 times 20, if you do it on your calculator, is actually 15.6. We're going to need that number in a minute. I'm going to multiply this top equation by negative 0.9, all the way through by negative 0.9, which makes negative 0.9x minus 0.9y equals negative 18. And then we're going to add these two equations together. Those cancel out. And, you know, you can use your calculator for all this arithmetic. This is negative 0.15y. Now I'm, say, I'm subtracting negative 18 from 15.6. I've already done that multiplication. I'm using this number. So on your calculator, 15.6 minus 18 is negative 2.4. Finish solving by dividing by 0.15, and we end up with y equals 16. If y is 16, and this plus 16 gives me 20, then obviously x has to be 4. So it is 16 liters of the 75% solution, and x is 4 liters of the 90% solution. You can't just put your answer as 16. You have to label it 16 liters of, identify which solution, 75%. So let's take a look at another one. Every one of these can be set up in this exact same fashion. So a 60% solution of salt is to be mixed with 80% to get, a, to get 40 liters of 65% solution. So start labeling out your beaker. We have a 60% solution to go with an 80% solution. We want to end up with a 65% solution doesn't matter where these two go. They're both underneath. They could be swapped, but we want the 0.65 all by itself because it's what we want to end up with. We know we want to get 40 liters of that solution, so the 40 goes right here. We have no idea how much of each of these to use, so here's our x, here's our y. So pretty, pretty much a cookie cutter setup. What goes in the beaker is the amount. Put your percentages on the bottom. You get your equations directly from the beakers. So here's your equations x plus y equals 40, that's your inside, 0.6 times x, 0.8 times y, and 0.65 times 40. What's left is just to do the arithmetic on this. 
0.65 times 40 is actually 26. That's the number I'll be using. I could use substitution, but I'm going to use elimination instead. I'm going to multiply this top by negative 0.6, which gives me negative 0.6x minus 0.6y equals negative 24. So remember, I'm not using that anymore because that's where the 26 came from. Add these two equations together. That cancels. I get 0.2y. 26 minus 24 is 2. Solve by dividing both sides by 0.2. And remember, your calculator can do all this arithmetic for you, and y works out to be 10 liters of, of what? Well, the y is right here. It's with the 0.8, so it must be my 80% solution. And if y is 10, and this plus this makes 40, then the x must be 30. So x equals 30 liters of what? Of the 60% solution, because that's what's labeled right there. Now, you can check this very easily by entering 0.6 times 30 plus 0.8 times 10, and it should equal this 26 that we got for the product of 0.65 times 40. Now, this is not a percent setup, but it's the same idea. The merchant wishes to mix coffee worth $6 per pound and coffee worth $3 per pound to get 90 pounds of a mixture worth $4 per pound. Well, instead of putting percents underneath, we're going to put the money amount underneath. So we're mixing $6 per pound with $3 per pound and end up with $4 per pound. How much of the $4 per pound? We want 90 pounds of that. Do we know how much of the $6? Or how much of the $3? No, that's our x and our y. So here's our two equations, x plus y equals 90. That's our inside equation. And then the product, 6 times x, 3 times y, 4 times 90. That's our second equation. 4 times 90 is better known as 360. That's the number I'll be using in a second. I'm going to use elimination on this. I'm going to multiply by negative 3 all the way through. And be sure when you're doing elimination, word problem or not, that you're multiplying that negative 3 times everything. So this is negative 3x minus 3y equals negative 270. Draw your line so that you can add these. The 3y's cancel. 6x minus 3x is 3x. That's gone. 360 minus 270 is 90. Divide both sides by 3 and x is 30. Now what did x stand for? It's 30 pounds of the $6 coffee. And if this is 30 and this plus this makes 90, then y must be 60. So that means y is 60 pounds of the $3 variety. Now we're mixing nuts instead of mixing coffee. It's still the same exact kind of setup. Underneath, you're going to put your money amounts. We have a type of nut worth 388 per pound and another type of nut worth 488 per pound. We want to end up with 100 pounds of this nut mixture worth $4.13 per pound. Just be sure you're consistent with this. Notice this is all the money amounts on the bottom. The 100's not on the bottom. The 100 is the amount, is the poundage. I don't know how much of this, I don't know how much of that. So my poundage, my amount of nuts, is going in the beaker. My two equations, x plus y equals 100, and the other is this product. Now, $4.13 times 100 is actually 413. So now I'm going to solve this with elimination. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 388 all the way through which makes negative 388x minus 388y equals negative 388. Draw your line. These guys cancel. $4.88 minus 388 is just 1y or y. 413 minus 388 is 25. So right there is an answer. Y is 25. 25 what? 25 pounds of, where's my y? Y is right here. That's the 488 brand. So you're going to get 25 pounds of the 488 brand. If y is 25, then x must be 75 because 75 plus 25 makes 100. So x is 
75 pounds of the 388 brand. How do I know it's the 388 brand? Because the way I've labeled it, 75 pounds of the 388 brand. Now these next two are just a little bit different, very similar in the setup, but the equation is going to be a little different. Instead of mixing nuts or coffee or percent solutions, we're just counting up bills, dollar bills, $10 bills, $20 bills, whatever. So that's our money amount. We have a $10 bill, we have a certain number of $10 bills, and that's what a $10 bill is worth. It's worth $10, that's why it's on the bottom. We have a certain number of $20 bills, and we have a total value of $14.80. I'll talk about that in a second. If there are a total of 85 bills, what's going in the beaker is the number of whatever, the number of pounds of coffee, the number of pounds of candy, the number of liters of liquid. In this case, it's actually the number of bills. So there are a total of 85 bills. I don't know how many $10 bills are in there. I don't know how many $20 bills are in there. That's why that's X and that's Y. But here's the deal. The total value of the money is $14.80. The total value. You're not going to put $14.80 under here. There is no $14.80 bill. So it's not this times 85. The 1480 is already the total amount of money. So here's the difference in your equation. X plus Y equals 85. That's your number of bills equation. But your value equation is this. 10X plus 20Y. 10X plus 20Y equals the total amount of 1480. There's no reason for you to multiply because the 1480 is already the total. And then we're going to solve this the same way. We're going to use elimination. We're going to multiply all the way through here by negative 10. Makes negative 10x minus 10y equals negative 850. Draw your line. The x's cancel. 10y equals 630. Divide both sides by 10. And y is 63. So... There's my 63 right there. 63 what? 63 $20 bills. If y is 63, x must be 22, because that's the only way these two things add up to 85. So x is 22. 22 what? 22 $10 bills. Next one, very similar. This time we have $1 and $5 denominations, okay? So $1 under here, $5 underneath here. We want to know how many of each type bill to end up with 154 bills. I don't know how many $1 bills. I don't know how many $5 bills. I do know the total money is $466. Remember, it's the total money. So we go to the next, and we look at our equations. Our x plus y equals 150 stands for the number of bills. That's 154 bills stacked up, some of which are $1 bills, some of which are $5 bills. This next equation is your value equation. x plus 5y equals 460, not 466 underneath here. It's not 466 times 154 because there is no $466 bill. It's a total of 466. There's our equation. To solve this, all I need to do is multiply everything by negative 1, which makes negative x minus y equals negative 154. This time our x's cancel out. We have 4y equals 312. Divide both sides by 4. And y is 78. And if y is 78, then this is going to have to be 76 because that's the only way that adds up to 154. So it's 78 of these, which is the $5 bill. So it's 78 $5 bills. And X is 76 $1 bills.